Funding for the Our Town podcast is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota and the members of KSMQ Public Television. Thank you. a KSMQ public television show. We're excited to have you today. I am your host, Danielle Teal. We have Virginia Kazmarek. Did I say right. that right? Perfect, Rock yes, on. you're good. Exec- Executive Director of Rochester Area Family YMCA. Uh, we have her specifically this week because summer has started and we need activities for families to participate in and young people and older people. And we want to share that information, especially in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. So Virginia, are you ready to tackle this? I'm ready and I'm really excited to be here too. So thank you. Perfect. Okay, so you are the executive director at the Rochester Area Family YMCA. That's true. Yes, I've been actually, yes, <laughs> I've been in Rochester actually about a year and a half as the executive director here. Um, I prior to that, I was in Northfield, Minnesota, where we actually built a brand new YMCA and that I was there for 11 years. Um, but I'm not a stranger to Rochester because my my better part, my better half, um, Jim, actually grew up in Rochester. So we came here quite frequently for um, some of our tasty restaurants that we enjoyed and his family um, lives here and those kinds of well, things. Well, he's a good man then. We're yeah. glad to have you. He's a keeper. <laughs> yeah. So your journey to, to Rochester, uh, was that the main was point is that your, your husband was here and that attracted you to being here? And No, actually, no. you know, we finished building the YMCA in Northfield and we raised $10 million and we paid off all the debts we had for that building and opened it in 2014. And um, I had been hearing a little bit about the Rochester YMCA, maybe be looking for some leadership. And I was interested in that. And, and actually Jim and I said, you know, Rochester would be a great place to retire. And so I'm, I'm kind of in the other side of my career where I'm got grandchildren and I'm winding down, you know, to, to get to the other side. Um, but if you know me, winding down is still pretty fast. I still like to get big things done and work in big teams and make big impact. So, um, so it just seemed like a nice fit when the position became open about a year and a half. I can can totally relate. I'm one of those people that have to go, 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 go. And the YMCA is actually a great outlet for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, you've been here a year. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with kind of the programming last year. How have things changed that would normally happen. Is the YMCA youth camp still occurring? Yeah, actually that is that is the question right now that we get most from parents when they call in. So the, the, the basics of the program have not changed. So we're running two full day programs right now. And one of them is for kindergarten through fifth grade. I always have to look at the cheat sheet for that because I forget because I always That's think okay. of kindergarten through, through eighth. And the other one is called summer uproar, which is sixth through eighth grade. So it's more those tween ages. And parents can choose three, four, five days a week. It's a full day program and with before and after care. And the content of the program doesn't change. So we're focused on a lot of STEAM activities. You know, the science, the technology, the engineering, the math, the arts, the service learning. So the curriculum for both the younger and older is age appropriate, but it's very focused on what YMCAs do really well. And that's that that age of youth development. Um, so that's the core of it. What's changed, of course, is um, is COVID. And so that has changed tremendously some of the very infrastructure systems that we have. So to give you an example, um, we have a check-in system for parents. Mm-hmm. Parents have, a, you know, give us information about their little ones to include allergies and all any kind of um, things they'd like to share with their kids. So we can make sure the the day they have with us is the best. Only now they don't come into the YMCA building to drop their kids off. We actually have staff that go out to the curb and meet parents at the curb. Wow, curbside pickup, huh? Yep, and we have health. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Actually, I hadn't thought of that. That's great. I really like that. Isn't that great? Curbside pickup of the kids. I should. Full disclosure: both my kids are YMCA kids. Oh, good. So you know, you know that you know how that works right here. Yeah. My older daughter has, you know, graduated from from that. She's now fourteen, a freshman, so she's not able to go, but. Um, we're huge fans. So that's oh, she's so, a future counselor. You know, absolutely. I always think of those, that age group. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> so you have the curbside pickup and then what's yep. the process? Are you doing temp checks and stuff like that too? Not for the kids, but we okay. do a health screening, you know, and oh, the okay. health screening asks questions like, have you um, traveled out of the country the last 14 days? Um, have you been in contact with anyone that's been confirmed on COVID in the last seven days? Any family members who have been um, quarantined in the last seven days? And then we ask how they're feeling. Like, how are you feeling today? It's a health question. You know, are you feeling, you feeling good? Do you feel in sore throat? Have you got a temperature? You know, it's more of a, the world has really learned what's expected of COVID in the last three months. They know you're supposed to stay home. Our parents know that if you're not feeling well or you show symptoms or signs. So it, it's, it's um, much easier in, in lots of ways because everybody's been trained on what to expect and what they need to do if they're not, if they have symptoms or they're not feeling well, or if they do happen to contract COVID, you're, they know you need to be home. So we do all the health screening, all the checking, and then they come on in. We do, by the way, check the temperature of our staff team. But okay. we have the same health questions. Um, so, you know, we, we do do that with the staff team. So, yeah, and then we bring them up into the YMCA. And um, depending on the age, they go into a certain area and the day begins. What does the day look like for them? Has that changed a little bit too? Um, only in that our ratios have changed. So we had been, you know, by the, the, the different uh, Minnesota Department of Health and Minnesota Department of hum, um, Human Resources, I'm forgetting the other, I know the acronyms, but not always the names of the sure. departments, but we work really closely with the state um, to determine what's going to be the best in, in the ratios. And we had been having a one to 15, one counselor to 15 youth. And that gets a little smaller as the kids get younger. But right now we're in groups of 10. So that would include the counselor. So you have your, you know, your nine kids that are either kindergartners or your nine sixth graders and the counselors then work, you know, with those groups. So the groups are definitely smaller and we have spaces in the YMCA. So there's areas where a group of 10 can be for an activity or a educational piece or, you know, some fun activity. And then when they move, the room's cleaned before the next group comes in and that it is really nice. It it's might be one of the only times I've said since I've been here that I'm really happy we have a ginormous building <laughs> right. with lots of rooms. <laughs> you can rotate everyone. Yes, there's plenty of space and we can keep them all separated and, and we have an emphasis very much on cleaning. The cleaning procedures have changed to include what the counselors are expected to do and even what the kids are expected to do. So it's lots of teaching kids too about, you know, anything you're touching, we want to make sure is cleaned before and after. And so it's, it's kind of a team. It is very much actually a team endeavor with the counselors and with the, you know, the, the kids themselves. So, and we get outside a lot because the fresh yeah. air is good. Yeah. People need it. I can't tell you how much better I feel after I've been outside. Yeah. Speaking of the demeanor yeah. of everyone, how has the demeanor been with the children and the counselors being back, kind of getting to some sort of normalcy? If I had an emoji that was a cartwheel or a really both hands in the air jumping with your legs up, you know, jumping, it is absolutely off the charts. They're excited. Aww. And, and, you know, we've been offering school age care at the YMCA, the downtown location since um, March, you know, I think the first week after week the economy shut down. Right. And so we've been helping the kids with their distance learning during the days. We've been having our programs continue. So we continued that all the way to the end of the school year. Wow. Kudos and, to you all. I had no yeah. idea that you all were doing that. And, oh, it was nice. And parents that the emergency care or the essential care workers that needed to have that care because they were needed at their jobs. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, they were doing the cartwheel too, you know, all those, all those months. So, and then it gave us a great opportunity to learn all the best practices because you, you probably saw, you know, what we thought was best, you know, March 15th actually turned out to be different, eight, April 15th, and right. then different. We've been learning about this virus over the months and what's the best practices for cleanliness and distance and how you can do that best. So it's been a, it's been a great opportunity for us, and we've been more than pleased to be able to offer it. That's outstanding. Yeah, since, since March, um, you know, the governor had um, sheltered at home. You know, what are some, and, and there's some people that are continuing to social distance aggressively um, in shelter at home as long as possible. What are some things that you recommend doing, um, even if it's coming to the YMCA, you know, some protocols that would be safe for them or activities that are summer focused, what can they do that involves the YMCA or recommendations from the YMCA? 
Yeah, you know, we follow the, the Department of Health pretty closely. So when the governor puts out his executive orders, we're looking at every single line and word and detail in those um, in those orders. And so a good example is, you know, we can begin to do some sport activities right now, but to not do those ones that get you too many too close to each other. So like the traditional basketball, um, flag football. Yeah, those programs are the and the kids don't, you know, when they're playing a game, they just run a run. They're not thinking about do I need to keep six feet apart. So I, I think what parents need to do and, and kids, uh, you know, themselves as they get older is to think about what is it that I can do that's going to get me some exercise, get me outside, have fun, but yet still be mindful of the things you need to remember, which are the distancing and the breathing on each other, the masks and the, you know, washing your hands frequently and, and think about what you touch. You know, what's interesting is that now I'm paying more attention to where the kids touch you know, as I'm moving it. about the building. And being hypervigilant in that. Yeah, and, because... and even myself, you know, how many thing surfaces I touch without thinking about it. The and, kids, and so kids don't necessarily have that perception. They're just yes, free loving just and going. happy and just do whatever. Yeah. So yeah. how now do you if, reinforce that? Well, it, you know, the, what, what I've done actually that works really well that I'd re recommend to others is try to spend time with your hands in your pockets while you're doing something outside. Because it, and it only at the beginning, so you get a chance to be aware of how many times you're touching a surface or a rail or a counter or something or your kids or people's other people's kids, you know, that I think you need to be aware, very much aware of yourself first. And as you've, after you've done that, you can help teach your kids to be aware of themselves too. Because, you know, someday we will move to where we have some, um, you know, some, um, shots can be given to help prevent this and it's going to move to a, where we'll be able to get to a little closer together and have more people in, in groups but it'll probably be a while so i think this culture change has um has been something we all have to learn as we go along the way but you know activities with families too are different because when you're with your core family you can tackle and dive and and do those closer things because that's your family that you're around all the time it's it's more when you start to venture out you need to become more aware of what you're doing. I, I noticed that some parents feel like they're doing the same thing over and over. <laughs> like it's, you know, repetitively going to walks, you know, and, and some of that stuff gets a little old. What are some ways that it, that kind of thing can be enhanced or some kind of creative ideas or resources that parents and families can look, look for? So and don't laugh, but you know what I'm going to recommend? Go ask ahead. your, ask your kids what uh, games and activities they used to do at camp or with their friends that were the most fun. And then when they say to you, like, I wrote some of them down because I, I asked my counselor and my, to let me know some of the activities they're doing right now. Yeah, they, play, they play a game called Sharks and Minnows. Okay, and I'm not quite sure what Sharks and Minnows is, but I bet if you ask your kids, they probably know what that is. And they're going to be Sharks chasing you. Minnows. Yeah, I think it's a tag game, I think. Yeah. Is that and, kind and, of thing. and that way that can be modified. They don't have to tag the individual. They could just, like, yeah. get, you know, get close enough or... And then I having them you, throw something, but maybe not throw yeah. something. <laughs> but, but I like what you're saying, because if you get the kids thinking about using their imagination, you know, like, you know, I'm of the age, um, I, I mentioned actually earlier to Danielle that I'm, I'm on the age um, of where I'm moving into mm -hmm. you know, retirement within the next 10, 10 years. And I've got grandchildren and they've got games I've never heard of before. And so the more you have conversations with them about what they'd like to do. But when I was young, when we didn't have as much of the, so now I'm going to age myself, forgive me, but That's I didn't okay. have the technology. You know, we did the like, um, look for different leaves. We did the scavenger hunts. We did the, um, you know, we were outside using our imagination trying to figure things out. And I think that we maybe have swung that pendulum too far that the kids don't do that as much. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they need to swing as far as I was when I was young, but I think having tapping into kids is one thing. You know, another thing is to use the technology. So to Google, you will be so surprised if you Google activities for kindergartners or activities for eight-year-olds in the Google, there are bazillions of people asking the same question you are, Danielle, and there's yeah. a bazillion people posting about it. And so tap into each other and, and rely on your kids' imagination and, and have fun with it. You know, maybe you're, you're buying some simple things from Walmart too, to be able to play a game that you change the rules a little too. You know? Yeah, that I um, recently bought binoculars and, and different things so that we could go, you know, look at birds because, you know, Great quarantine. Idea. Love that. I, and I'm now obsessed with my hummingbird feeder. 
that great? See, it's, it's good for adults too. <laughs> yeah. Let's begin adults. Uh, it's not just families that, that need yeah. these outlets. Let's talk about adults yeah. and, and um, you know, youth and teens and, and what offerings are out there. Is the YMCA offering any uh, digital downloadable exercise routines or anything like that? Yep, absolutely. We have something called 12 Bursts. So it's 12bursts.org, actually, 12bursts.org. And on there, we've been listing hundreds of different activities that are like bursts of 10 minutes activities that they can do. And so we've had, oh my gosh, thousands and thousands of Rochester people and people from all over the state and Midwest. And I mean, it's just gone viral um, with people that'll go in there and then have their kids challenged to do different activities. So that's a really good recommend. I'm glad you brought that up, Danielle. I had forgot about that. But yeah, that's a really good op opportunity for people to do that. Yeah. Um, are you doing any of it? <laughs> no, is that terrible? I think, I think I've lost, I think I've told my, um, my gym that I, lo I gained like 10 or 12 pounds. I'm like, and I'm not usually a, a group exercise person. You know, I'm, right. I'm going left when everybody else is going right. Even, I've worked for the Y 20 years and I still yeah. can't get the rights and lefts right. Um, but I think I might take a Zumba class as soon as I can. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I love asking that question because it's like we're offering there, but sometimes we're all so busy. It's tough to get that done. We just have to commit to it, don't we? Yeah. And life has slowed down. You know, everything has slowed down. And so some ways, even though this has been such a traumatic three months for so many people, um, both from an, in economically and, you know, with, with the stuff that's happening with the racial inequity and, you know, with COVID and fear of being sick. There's just so much going on. One thing I'm noticing is that a lot of people are slowing down. And I, I've been one. I'm hopeful that as we begin to turn the dials back up a little more and a little more, that I can keep some of that self-care that I've been practicing probably better than I've ever done my entire yeah. life the last three months. And like you're talking about too, you know, Danielle, you found things to do with your kids and now you're looking at hummingbirds. Yeah. How can yeah. we keep some of that when the dial turns up so that we're still balancing that? I don't think Americans do self-care very well. I and, think you're, you're touching on a topic yeah. that, it, that is really important right now, especially um, it, I think it's becoming more obvious and prevalent is the, the mental health and yeah. um, why services like the YMCA offerings are so important as an outlet for individuals. Yeah. What, are, what are some things that you think are, are services at the YMCA that, that people are really looking to as the most popular need? A couple right now that I'm seeing, and you know, as we, the dial gets to turn and we're able to offer more and more services, this, my answer will change. But a couple, you know, we have been doing virtual um, virtual classes, virtual meditation, virtual um, health coaching. And, you know, those are things that when you work for a nonprofit, those of you that are listening or watching, um, you don't always put the technology on the, on the front of the priority list because you're putting so much energy into the programs themselves. And we've definitely had the boot put on the YMCA butt and pushed us right into technology. And that boot was COVID. And so we wow. are definitely. And you know what? That's that's for a lot of organizations. Yep. yep. It'll probably remain after yep. COVID, right? Yep, absolutely it will. So, you know, we see the numbers of people that are doing, like we've been offering on our Facebook pages, for example, um, a live 10 minute or 20 minute meditation. That's a different kind of, you know, sometimes it's related to joy. Sometimes it's relating to grieving. Sometimes it's got different topics. Thousands and thousands of people are viewing and clicking in and commenting and participating in those. And so again, going back to that self-help type thing, you know, and we have an, um, classes on our website too that are called 360, um, let's see, YMCA 360 or 360 ymca.org is, is where those classes are. We've been doing YouTube um, videos too, so you can do them when it's your own time. And that not only has brought in more people who maybe didn't have the time in the past, but mm -hmm. um, but maybe couldn't afford to, to join the Y or didn't make time to join the Y, whatever, because you can do those on your own time. And so if you make time to do them, you can do them. But the meditation has been really fun. We've also begun offering health coaching, which is much broader. Yeah, let's talk um, about that a little bit more. What yeah, that's about? a much broader. It, yeah. It's a, you know, it's a, it's for me, it's, it's a new thing because I, I haven't, I haven't been in that world as much in the health coaching world, but it's a, you know, it's something that you need to get certified in. It's something you need to maintain your credentials in. And so it's a, it's a high level coaching position and it's more about physical, nutritional, mental. It's about your job. It's about how you're balancing life. It's about how you're balancing family. It's about 
You know, it's a much more broad, um, comprehensive. And just saying it, doesn't it sound like that's what we all need? We all need that. We all need I, the opportunity. I, I'm a, I'm, I need that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Start finishing up graduate <laughs> school, work full time, yes. do a lot of extra. I mean, you, you mentioned, yes. you know, your activity as well. That sounds very appealing. I might have to look into yeah. that myself. Yeah, and that's something that can be done virtually. Hmm. And so that will continue. We'll continue to do that. You know, th we've thought about in the next phases when we're allowed to um, do some personal training, for example, that's probably going to look different now. Some of it can be done virtually and some of it will need to be still, you know, when you're working with someone fairly close. So there, everything we look at now at the YMCA definitely has that boot, that COVID boot on our technology butts. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. How can we, yeah. how can we do this to reach more people, right. make a bigger impact and they don't actually have to come to us to do it, all, mm -hmm. all of it. So, so it'll be interesting. So community involvement, how has the YMCA, uh, I, I noticed some Facebook posts and I was really yep. impressed and admired, um, yeah. uh, you know, some of the things shared on that. Can you share a little bit about YMCA Rochester's involvement in the community? Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm part of the Rochester's nonprofit consortium. And so that's a group, gosh, it must be about 35 organizations. And it includes city and county um, folks on there and school district folks too. And as soon as COVID happened back in mid-March, at least when the economy shut down, um, we all got together. So it's all the leading organizations you can think of in town in Rochester. And we all got together and pivoted our work to focus on basic needs. So initially it was all about food. So remember when they were on, the kids were on spring break yep. and we were trying to figure out how make, to make sure everybody can get their food and get access to that. And so the, the Rochester Y was lucky enough to get a, a grant from the Sheridan story. And so we have sent thousands of, of bags of meals to channel one. So I work with Virginia over at oh, channel one. Yes. And I just have them sent directly to her rather than have another location here to have folks pick it up because they do it so well. Mm -hmm. um, so collaborating, you know, trying to do the collaboration. So we've been providing lots and lots and lots, thousands and thousands of, of meals and food to channel one. So that was the initial place we were at. Um, initial place too was we kept our licensed preschool programs going or licensed child care. So that's the six weeks up to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. We have a brand new licensed child care center over by Lourdes. Well, it's a year old now, but relatively new. And we kept that going and we saw a lot of parents put their kids on hold, which opened up space for emergency care and essential care workers. So we've been keeping that going too, and that's continuing to today. And then the school age care I mentioned, we were doing a lot of the school age care here at the downtown location. And then new, literally like the last couple of days is we're doing a essential collections drive. So this is, oh. um, yeah, so this isn't food. This okay. is, you know, essential things like um, toothpaste and toilet paper and shampoo and um, feminine products and diapers and formula and, you know, all those kinds of things. And we're collecting them at the Y and then Family Services Rochester has a list of stuff they're really short on. It's like four or five items. Yes. Anything we collect that's that stuff, we give to them. And everything else goes up to Minneapolis, to the Hiawatha YMCA, for the neighborhoods oh. that have been hit hard up there. Yeah, and Hiawatha is like a mile um, south of mm -hmm. Lake Street. So it's a, they're all, they're reeling from COVID, let alone reeling from yes. what's been happening the last two, three weeks. Yes. And so that, so we're, you know, very focused on, on, I mean, the YMCA is a nonprofit, so we're very mm -hmm. focused on how can we give back and make an impact, but collectively, like, I don't want to do it in a silo. Right. I want to do it with family services. I want to do it with channel one. I want to do it with, you know, organizations and bring to the table what, what resources we have to make it as impactful as possible. We're all better together. That's, yes, yes, absolutely. That's yes. a slogan, actually, a YMCA slogan. We together, we're better oh. together. Oh, really? It is. <laughs> yes. Wow. Perfect. Thank Can you. I Tee up, Danielle. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, so you got funny. it. <laughs> wow, it's like I I made that happen. That's so funny. I'll put a little extra money in the envelope I'm sending you for teeing me up there, Pop oh, Boss. No, that right. was a joke. That was that's a complete funny. joke. Yeah, that's funny. Um, what do you see for the future of the YMCA? I think that um, I, <laughs> can you ask me that in six months and right. then ask me again in another year? It's tough. I, it's a tough question right now. It is. It kind of derailed a lot of organizations. 
It did. Yeah. And we're no different than, you know, we're a membership based organization. So we have definitely seen a significant decline in people being able to keep their membership going. And those that could, those ended up being donations for us just to help, you know, because we still have a building, we still have staff, we're still providing childcare and school age care, we're still trying to get a center, we still are moving, we're just not the same as we were before. And so I think we're, we're very much focused on our core values, you know, youth development, um, healthy living, social responsibility. And, and I think if I was to add something that COVID again was another boot, it's even a stronger emphasis on equity and collaboration. Mm -hmm. So we, that's another, we talk about that and we have a lot of programs in those areas. Now we're just very mindful of how we can make sure what we provide is available to all everyone has an opportunity to participate in programs or, or services or whatever it may be. And, you know, and with an equity eye to it is so important that we, we kind of check at the door, our unconscious bias mm -hmm. and think about, you know, and I think it's an ongoing thing. We all have to continue to learn and train and learn and train and learn and train and listen and learn and, and then take action on how we can make it really a better place in Rochester for all of our citizens, all of our youth, all of our, you know, community members, regardless of their background. I'm a redhead. The red, no, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> the red, oh, the redheads. <laughs> um, you know, we had, we had D. Sable from uh, the Diversity Council on last yeah. week. You know, it's an important yeah. topic to discuss. And, and how have um, the children and youth uh, responded at the YMCA in that regard? Yeah, you know, the, um, the kids... They're not as they're not front and center with what's happening unless their parents are having conversations with them about it. And Dee's on the um, nonprofit consortium, you know, and I've had Dee and one of her board members come with me prior to COVID up to the Twin Cities to visit the YMCA's Equity Innovation Center. And so Dee and I have had many conversations about, you know, how is it that we can work together or we can tap into resources to make sure that kids have opportunities that we're, our programs are inclusive, that our hiring practices are inclusive, that our boards are representing our community. You know, those conversations were already happening and there was already action steps in those. And so now it's just, you know, it's a broader conversation and more people understand when you say racial equity. I think people were really confused before and how, what does that mean for me? Or how do I, how does it impact me? Or, you know, but more people are understanding that there is a, there is racial equity challenges everywhere in your house, in our community, in our nation worldwide. And so how do you, one person, one family, one group, one organization, multiple organizations, how do we all do this together to, to do it right? So that is a, that's a good message to convey and I appreciate you sharing that Virginia. Yeah, what is, what is the one thing you want the community to know in the face of the pandemic that they can look towards to be helpful? I think that, oh gosh, that's a loaded question. That's a big question. Um, what do I think that, um, I, so do you mean from the YMCA's perspective or do you mean community? From the wise? YMCA or, I mean, from you, I think one of the, one of the goals of, uh, you know, at least this podcast is to be helpful to the community. Right. To, you know, provide information and connect people to content that they can rely on and, and gain, um, gain a bit of hope too, you know, yep. during it. So um, I, I like, I like for people in the community to be able to share, you know, what sort of message do you have for people that have had this challenge of the pandemic or uh, yeah. the social unrest, uh, you know, in our country? I think, I think everybody's at a different place of being ready to go out into the community. And I say that broadly, meaning restaurants and participate in, you know, activities at at different businesses and all that. So I think when you're ready, so you have to start that sentence with when you're ready, because everybody's got different circumstances and everybody's at a different place. But when you're ready, start doing what they've been saying about the restaurants. Participate in your local nonprofit you know, activities. Mm -hmm. um, get out and, and find out what's going on if there's places you can volunteer. Um, donate to the organizations that you feel are making big impacts to the Y. You know, the YMCA is no different than any other business or any other nonprofit in Rochester. We're struggling right now. We're not, I'm significantly smaller in revenue than what I was, you know, three months ago. All organizations are because we stopped the truck, literally right. stopped. Yes. Uh, so I, I think the more participation, the more activities, the more involvement, the more donations, I mean, find the organizations that you feel are, 
are the ones that are going to make the most impact and find ways to be able to support them, whether that's participation, donation, volunteering, you know, all those kinds of things. But when you're ready, because it you don't feel rushed. Everybody's mm-hmm. at a different point. Virginia, that's, that is um, an incredible message. And I, and I am so grateful that you are on the show. I hope that it provides information that people can use in their daily life. Uh, for that self-care, for that um, interaction, the human-to-human interaction in safe ways. We are so appreciative of you and the YMCA's contributions to the community. Thank you. It's been absolutely a pleasure to be on today. You know, we're, um, this has been nice, a nice little break just to be able to talk about stuff at a high level. So I appreciate you, you asking me to be on. Absolutely. Thank you so much for tuning in to Our Town Podcast, a KSMQ public television show. I have to thank my producer, Annie, she is incredible. I'm so grateful to her. She spends hours uh, helping to put this together, editing and posting it for you all to listen to. So a lot of kudos to Annie for all her hard work. Leave us a review. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe. Catch up with us on Facebook or Twitter at KSMQ, hashtag Artown. Tune in next week for more on Artown.